team pick. Shadow Demon. Escape oh, Gaming's turn to ban. Dire Team Ban. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back into the World Cyber Arena 2016 Season 2 European Qualifiers. We are here with Kai P versus Escape Gaming in a best of five series. And no, it is not the Grand Finals. It is in fact the Upper Bracket Finals. The winner of this series will move on to the Grand Finals. And of course, we'll see who that's going to be as we move through this series. Escape Gaming now up one nothing. We'll wait and see who's going to come out on top. My name is Malt with me is Purge. Escape Purge, we, we thought that KP, Kai P had a pretty good chance at the late game, but Escape, they just obliterated them with, I think, Blimp on that Draw Ranger, some really good itemization coming out. We talked about Era and his Slardar with the the um, the Shadow Blade. So, you know, Kai P, they have to go back to a different well. They've got to try a couple of different heroes out here, it seems. Yeah, um, I, they seem to be a very theocrafty team, so I'm not too surprised to see them change it up a bit. I, I think they had a really good start to their game. Um, just the, the farm levels on Marana didn't scale quite as well as their opponents did. Maybe part of the problem with um, with sitting that much around Roche area led to that issue, but it had more impact out of Sing Sing. I think they could have won that game. And fights maybe could have gone better too, but as a whole, really good. It's going to be a close series. That's pretty clear from how game one went. <laughs> Yeah, I would be shocked if it's a 3-0, but again, we've seen stranger things at uh, different Dota tournaments, so that's something we'll have to keep our eye on as we do progress through the draft, but guys, do you know Dota? Do you feel like you want to be able to bet on Dota and, uh, well, bet bet legally is the more important thing? If so, then check out betway.com where you can use... This banner code down below and, of course, get a free five euro bet. Um, on top of that, we'd like to let you know that Betway is, in fact, of course, a legally licensed gambling site. And those of you that are 18 years of age to and older uh, are uh, eligible to play. Not only that, but, of course, uh, you have to be in a country, uh, of course, in which betting and gambling is legal for you to play as well. So with that said, Escape Gaming. Who who would you bet in this game, Purge? Who would you go for in this particular game? Uh, God, I don't know. For the whole best of five, I have no idea. Actually, well, let's 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 say not for the best of five, but for the the way that you see this this draft um, going right now, and of course with the way that well, there uh, are two picks. I don't know anything yet. Come on, <laughs> man! Too early. I'm putting you on the spot here. Give me some. Uh, can't influence me in that way. I'm not. Is it even legal in America to to gamble on on that way? Uh, I don't think it is. is it? I think probably... it's just like Canada, Germany, and plus one or something. I'm not sure. That's a, that's a well, bit look, of a gray area. I'm from Wisconsin. It's very similar to Canada in some ways. Um, <laughs> gambling can be a thing to do. Cold in the winter. We're approaching winter. It's only August, so technically it's still deep into the summer, but it might be cold soon. Start practicing, guess. All right. Use those euros. I don't know if you can spend them in Canada or not, but your best. <laughs> I have, I have absolutely no idea <laughs> if you can, but I'm sure there's exchange rates. Bane picked up for Escape Gaming, Kunkka and Marana. Uh, Bane said her just is very well with both of these heroes, obviously with Arrow, and not only that, but Torrent as well. So lots of kind of bringing heroes back, keeping heroes in place. Not necessarily stuns, but there are disables, and the one Marana stun, obviously, with the Arrow, which uh, combined up with these two heroes should be just fine. Um... I'm a, I like, I'm a fan. I like Escape's lineup a lot right now, yeah. Look, they have so many different ways that they can land arrows. It's kind of similar to what Kaipi was doing in the previous game. Um, in this game, though, Kaipi going for a different strat. The fact that they've Shattered Human now looks amazing. They needed it against Konka Marana. And this used to be one of the only ways that Shattered Human got drafted, actually, was in, for um, defensive setups, kind of that kind of stuff. Oh, they're going to do an X combo, and I'll disrupt you after the torrent lands, save the boat damage. Same for Arrow. So I kind of like what Kaipi's working with. Also, Juggernaut is the perfect carry against that as well. Um, back in Zephyr, when we'd always pick Shadow Demon plus one, like Shadow Demon plus Stunner follow-up, um, people would always pick Juggernaut against us, and every time it would happen. The first couple times, I was like, oh, no big deal. But once I started experiencing and realizing that how harder that makes your job of trying to gank lanes, it changed everything, really. So Jug SD are a pretty good solution against this Bane Marana Kunkka thing. The problem is that if you do get the Bane sleep off, then kind of just screwed anyways if Shadow Demon's not in the area. But Jug's a good idea. It combos well with Shadow Demon. The illusions are very, very strong that you make. Um, but Axe is going to pose a problem, at least in the laning stage for Juggernaut. 
Why do you say that? What what about Axe makes Juggernaut's life a little bit harder? Well, Mott, he does pure damage when he spins, first of all. Um, Jug is a melee hero, so laning against him can be a bit scary. With that said, though, if Jug gets spin off first, then at least he's also doing a lot of damage to Axe. That's the decent trade off there. Um, but at least in the laning stage, if they can get some setup on Jug, there is ways that they can pressure. It's kind of like a, I wouldn't necessarily say it's 50 50, but in some ways, there's advantages for both sides. So, which is pretty good considering Jug is normally extremely good against any melee hero. That is an off laner. <clears throat> if escape gets the right tri lane going or dual lane or they get the right setups or good combos, then it can be really scary for Jug. We'll wait and see how things transition into this uh, last pick for Kai P in this uh, pick phase, and then we're into the last bands. Uh, let's talk about the bands a little bit because <clears throat> Huskar ban, you have a Meepo ban, so there's respect across the board, I feel like. Um, Escape. I'm not sure how often they've run the the Huskar. Uh, going back to TI, I think they've they did a couple times actually. Now that I think about it, yeah, they did in the wild card at the very least. I remember uh, the games they won in the wild card. I think they they were using um, the. I might be misremembering, and I might be thinking of another team, but I'm pretty sure Escape during the wild card was using the Huskar to their benefit to to beat. Um, I think it was Execration at the time. Huskar against which hero? Uh, well, just the team Huskar against Execration. Oh, okay. Um, in that last series, I think it was the last series. I, yeah, it was. I don't know if we'll see a Huskar here, though. I mean, there's so many disables on Escape. Plus, they have well, Axe. It was um, banned out, so that's. I just oh, wanted okay. to point out that that it was banned, and, and Kai P kind of just saying, "Okay, well, Escape's known for playing this. Let's take it out of the pool." Oh, that match. Okay, I understand. Tied on um, yeah, would have been. Decent, maybe. They definitely need some more damage output. They've got pretty good nukes on escape, but it looks very similar to the problems that Kaipi had in the previous game, that their damage in the late game would be a little iffy. Uh, it's a pretty good pick, though. I'm very good against chain stuns because you can always ravage once the crack control procs. So if he's the one that gets gone on, very similar. Basically, um, if they can do what K was able to do with Timbersaw in the last game, he'd be great. He takes the nukes, he casts ravage. And then there should be some some follow-up from his team to hopefully get kills. Um, for example, if Tide gets initiated on, throw the stuns out, then Sand King channels Epicenter in the back line as the Ravage comes through, they could just wipe fights. Pretty interesting draft. But three three melees right now against Axel Iffy. Seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Not the best a bit nuke sketchy. either. So yeah. could be an amazing axe game. I, I feel like this axe can absolutely just tear asunder Kai P's lineup, Diet but uh I mean I'm going back to TI6 a lot, and I, I do want to pose a question to you. Do you remember any Please. big Tidehunter games? I remember any big Tidehunter games? Are you, yeah, are you saying that Tide wasn't picked much at TI6? I, I, I feel like he was picked occasionally, but not... Yeah. Maybe, again, I'm misremembering. My impression, too. I mean, I can pull up stats or something, but I, I definitely agree. I think he got a little unplayed there. It was really about Timbersaw. That's for real. If, if you wanted an offlane here, Timber was a lot more prioritized. Um, yeah, that, that was picked a crap load. Remember that as well. So yeah, couple of heroes that just seem to be higher priority. I mean, Todd Hunter was maybe picked during the group stages a fair bit. I remember a couple of group stage games, but when it came to the main event, I felt like he just kind of fell off. And I'm willing to Dyer to see team. stats from whoever that that proved me otherwise. Uh, but it you go back to Manila. And there were a couple of good side hunter games there. Yeah, um, there were definitely a were. very solid like, and for that, not just talking about Fnatic in Ohio and uh, his side hunter games, but just in general, you know, all the teams, a lot of side hunter games there. Yeah, so it's, it's a pretty fun hero to watch. It's kind of weak against Drow Ranger is probably another reason why he hasn't been picked that much, just because the the draw damage is so so strong. Um, Luna is a good pickup though. Kaipi has really really strong team fight right now between Ravage, Disruption, Jug Spin, Omni Slash, Eclipse, and Sanking. Like every single one of their heroes should be very 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 strong in a team fight. This is a level six, so it's a mid jug, I would imagine. And the Luna is going to be played in the safe lane. You have Lunar Blessing to help the jug amp the damage up. You have the Shadow Demon for the illusion with the Luna, and this is all before you know we talk about the level six abilities, which you were talking about. Ooh. Meanwhile, Troll is picked up for Escape Gaming. Oh, I can't wait to see this. I, I'm excited to see it build. I, I want. That's the thing I'm most curious about. Troll. There's so many items that look on paper like they're great for him, like Dragon Lands, Echo Saber, but I haven't seen a build that works. So I'm hoping that era does a cool new build that i haven't seen before he may still go 
phase boots aquila sny into like scotty and make me bored but not bored i'm still happy to see troll but definitely a very interesting pick pretty good against luna actually and good against jug too two heroes that are quite tanky by a lot of hybrid stat items troll usually beats those heroes in 1v1 although tide is going to be a huge problem landing anchor smash on troll is going to offset a huge amount of his damage so could be a very interesting game um, although troll also might suck he's got the bkb i think if you go for range the range damage and the melee damage are not changed you know anymore like correct the, the melee damage is gone you know the melee bonus damage from berserker's yep. rage so we've seen a lot of heroes just go for the ranged although you don't have the benefit of being able to walk up and see us using your right click with just well, melee yeah and it's not just that it's also that six bonus armor when you go to melee range and you get a lower base attack time plus the bashes so um somebody wrote my chat yesterday when i was talking about actually apparently when you get echo saber if you throw a ranged troll attack but then you switch to melee before it, you actually do get the slow which might make it work Hmm. probably not i want that build to work so bad but that I, seems I, I feel like, like it doesn't i feel like sny is just so much better that seems like a gimmick that is like uh more more uh difficult than you know it is just like no, no i mean you can you can definitely get the soft that part's not difficult but the problem is you're not getting the double hit because you're ranged well you True. would technically be melee but you'd be far away i don't know i'd have to try it out but i have a feeling it sucks just so like much better to get us and why early like invasion to item. smoke into the jungle will they find anybody it's going to be bambo when he sees it immediately calls it out they'll get out no casualties very good positioning by bambo to make sure he blows up that smoke of deceit gang and they, uh, this team is next level honestly like that the way that they did that was so perfect hide one hero behind the tree had the other hero who's magic immune but visible and go magic mean that is but is visible he's the one that break lets the visual break smoke and then if needed the sand king could have burrow strike away they did that very perfectly and that's gonna break a smoke they knew that their opponents were likely to aggro try so really nicely done both wards dedicated there and it looks like kaipi is then gonna just completely dodge the trial lane goes to the safe lane they're 1v1s tide can be safe lane maybe he dies a little bit but whatever and then on the mid it's jug and this is going to completely screw up what escape wants to do they want to get ganks they want to put pressure on but if they're mid the mid here is a jug and he's difficult to kill because of spin everything gets a lot harder this is uh it's going to be interesting you can already see kezu he wanted to have a good time he's ready to get one shadow poison for his for his trouble they're really they they're actually trying to keep him back at the tier two tower for now so smart because if he gets to a creep wave and is able to pull it he can easily kill it solo but if they just prevent him from getting near their creeps then they stop everything there's actually nothing they can do then but now it's going to limit their experience a little bit but the important thing is keeping axes as under leveled as possible that way when luna has a big advantage she can just solo against him and then the supports can do whatever they want on the map but it's it's a typical offlane thing but if the offlane is able to get a lot of experience then it makes him a lot more effective in terms of the early game and it makes it harder for the supports to do whatever they feel like this is, I mean, you see it now. Kezu has to start in the offlane and uh, and just try to, or not offlane, excuse me, jungle and try to find whatever he can. And this is without an Iron Town because he wasn't expecting this type of aggressive lineup coming through. That's not All bad right. for him to jungle though. I mean, the, the supports are also getting decent Radiant things done in Kaipi. They did a, a stack there on the small camp, then they farmed it together. They do have to be careful about the stack so oh, they can be cleared man. so easily by Axe if he's ahead. Yeah, well, we'll see if he can get to that point, but yeah, Absor again is going to have to come up big with these torrents early on into this game. He's not been scouted yet, I don't believe, but Sing Sing should see him coming soon. I mean, if he if he remembers how last game went, although it was um, going seven in the mid on the Tinker. Bambo will get vision. He's going to walk up. Bambo can Burrow Strick away. Burrow Strick into Yapsor if he wants to as well, then walk away, but it looks like he'll just skitter around down towards that bottom rune spot. Torrent. Uh, Who's gonna and he still gets it. <laughs> wow, that bro strike lasts longer than the torrent at level one. So. Oh yeah, yeah. The bro strike stun duration is great. It's two point one seven seconds versus the one point six, I believe, of torrent. Yes. Both and not, neither of them scale. So. Yeah, it's kind of interesting actually. Bit of a difference. Um, downside is Bambo does not have mana, but he'll probably just sap Kezu. This is actually really effective, especially because Kezu is still level one. We will get yeah. two off of this large camp, but just contesting the experience is huge. I wonder if he's going to try to steal this. Oh, yep. he does. Oh, Kezu's not happy. That's frustrating. You can see the smile on Bambo's face right now. I know what it looks like. <laughs> 
I hope so. You guys play together for. It's it's ah, he's he just cool. emotes. He he has so many emotions. I'm saying emotes not as like he says cap or anything, but he shows so much emotion when he plays games. And when I see him do anything in a pro game now, I just know what he's thinking or looking like or saying. And even if it's not completely accurate, it You're just makes Bamble watching him so much more fun. The Bamboo Whisperer Purge. Meanwhile, Yaps are in the bottom lane. Shadow Poison. They've got the Battle Hunter up. Kill them. There's going to be the Illusions coming out. That's the disruption. Though. Kezu needs to back up. Torrent's going to come through. Whip completely. Two Shadow Poison stacks on both. Arrow's going to come through with that almost hit. While I die. That would have been a nice nifty pickup and to get them the first blood. But unfortunately, that's not going to be uh, it's not going to be accomplished. As Bamboo will go ahead and deny himself. Both a very good start, I feel like, for Kai P. Purge. Just double feels... kills. Oh, neutral is so strong, dude. It's it's going okay for Kaipi there. Um, if they had, winning. Oh, Sing Sing oh dying here. my. Is he still in trouble? He doesn't have Blade Fury. He, that arrow hit, he would have died, but the arrow just missed barely to the left, I believe. Yeah, that was very close. But, so Sing Sing stays alive. It's going to get a little pressured here. Um, if he can get the rune, he's in a good spot, but he can't. They're going to contest this. Bamboo will cover him bottom, but that's going to be a little bit wasteful for experience, but... He's actually having quite a bit of trouble mid. He's up to 19 now. It's been fine since Limp has been moving around the map a bit, but that first couple of laning stages didn't go super well. Oh, Cinder in, Cinder in trouble now. Is Great the... sleep there. Uh, yeah, this is the only way they kill. Disruption. Yeah, this should be a kill coming out. They're going to try to block him. He misses the block, but the bro strike comes in, and Bone 7 gets the kill with the Lucent Beam. And uh, to Perfectly be Perfectly done by them. They, they had, uh, Cinderin did well as, as well. He had a Nightmare, Pylite Eye, the one hero with the Disable left, who could stack Shadow. His, um, Bone 7 made the right choice also. Oh, this should be a dead Kezu. He's got one poison in the Shadow. Oh, he even gets the Soul Catcher off as well. The Burrow Strike comes through. And that should be the kill. Yeah, it's the Sandstorm. Torrent will hit up. The arrow comes through, and it's gonna barely miss. I almost thought it was gonna clip Pylite Eye. Okay. Good defensive disruption, but I don't know how long he can survive. Not much longer. Finally escape, get on the board. And it just seems like this game is is not it's it's kind of the opposite Radiant's I feel like of the last game. I don't remember Escape getting off to a bad start. I felt like they were doing fine in the early stages of this game in game one, but in game number two, I feel like they're missing out on a lot of. I, it's still pretty close, but you know the big thing actually is that um, Tidehunter is getting pretty much doing pretty much whatever he wants here. He's at level five right now. He's got 20 CS compared to the 23 of Axe. Except Axe has died once and pressured way hard. He's only level 3. Kaipi's doing way far better this game. They've really outlaned uh, Escape in the laning stage. They're clearly better at laning, or at least it's just this game. But I feel like the similar thing happened last game as well. Yeah, this uh, laning setup coming out from Kaipi has been solid. And after everyone is rotated down by Escape to this bottom lane, they move everyone else around for Kaipi. So. It's just kind of like, well, what's the point, man? I don't, you know, they yeah. try to find whatever they can, but. They're being so efficient. Like, even Bone 7 walking to a large camp here, he's gonna possibly contest rune, maybe get a kill. Oh, if he could kill Limp, this would be so big. Eclipse, uh, what a leap. A leaf. little sloppy. The Lucent Beam was about to come out. Now the now arrow, Bone 7 might get turned on, but he does have the range drop. The torrent will come up. The, they've got the defensive disruption if they need it, and it's perfectly timed, but he's got to have leap here, and he doesn't. They have the Tideburger coming out from Yapsor. That will provide the kill. It's yeah, very the, close, but... That's, that's disruption, man. If you can't use it to basically disjoint damage that was going to hit them, then it can be wasteful. Bone 7 also made the, the mistake he basically made is he needed to be closer to Potom. That way, the first beam hit at the same time as the first Lucent beam. Right. Because once he casted the, the Eclipse and it wasn't in range yet, then it let Limp realize what was happening. So if he started a little closer to the Potom when he did that, he might have been able to get a triple beam off basically before Limp leaps. But he missed the first beam and it made things a little too hard. Um, also, the yeah, if the disruption wasn't able to stop like the torrent stun and damage fall up, then he wasn't gonna live. Cause disrupting when somebody's about to die from damage, it's it doesn't do anything, especially when you have no escape. Yep. So that was pretty costly, actually. He could have maybe just farmed the jungle instead. I like that he went for the eclipse, but um, the fact that everyone escaped was there that actually set Kaipi quite behind with that death. Yeah, that's your your safe lane farmer. Well, I, in this sense, he was in the off lane for a period of time. But your safe lane farmer going down, but this is going to get played period, but he can leap away at any time. Sing Sing's trying to force out that leap, I believe. And the big thing really was the the fact that they got experience on their supports. They had a really rough laning stage. They they went aggressively try lane. They didn't kill the Tidehunter. They hadn't gotten very many kills. And now they kill a level 6 carry on the enemy team who has a pretty good amount of farm. The gold maybe wasn't massive, but the levels are huge. 
when you don't have when you haven't had control of your safe lane tri lane and able to pull a lot makes a big difference i feel like this is going to come down to era and he's farming well but i'm i'm every single troll game i've seen since i don't know how long it's been um it, it's just not been good and they the even game. have the moonlight shadow spotted by an observer ward and sentry combination so this moonlight yeah. shadow i don't know what they're trying to accomplish with it but it looks oh, they're, to be they're nothing. Looking, just looking for a kill. I, it's, it was really smart to do that. They just said, okay, we got a rune coming up. We'll see if they happen to walk down there. Maybe we'll get a free kill. Because, you know, the 8-minute the uh, pot mults usually aren't that useful. Just the fact alone that they could get a game-winning rune with that is pretty cool. Bam, we're going to take some damage. Yeah, the torment comes out the Tidebringer as well, but Bambo needs to leave. X Marks is gonna go. Don't He's alone. Die. He's got two seconds for Tidebringer. The torrent not gonna be there in time. Over the Tidebringer oh, continues shimmers. to do some serious damage. He's up in five seconds. Burrow Strike is there. Bambo's uh, playing too aggressively. Is a Bambo Can he play? get there in time for the Tidebringer? He's got Torrent as well, and he's gonna use it, and he will narrowly juke it. X Marks on cooldown. Bambo's no gonna go way. in and deny himself, and he gets it done. I. Oh my well, god. Dude, like, that, that's the most Bambo play I've seen in my whole fucking life, dude. Like, okay, he got the neutrals. He, oh, Ravage bottom. Troll's yeah. dead. Yeah, they killed Troll with the Ravage and the clips being used. That That's why Troll's bad right there. Because he just dies to nukes. Like, and maybe not necessarily bad, but it's a huge glaring weakness. He doesn't have a disable of his own that's a stun. So as soon as you throw a bunch of nukes on somebody, he's just an awful hero. And that's what happens. Until he gets BKB, he has this big window where he's got like Morbid Mask, Phase Boots, Aqua. He does a ton of damage, but only when he's not in the face of Disables and Magic Nukes. Very similar to PA in a lot of ways. Oh, that was maybe not the TP send. They're gonna TP more in if he can get some help before dying. Sins below, he's gonna brain tap and stay alive. Air will come through, but it's a four versus two at this point. Demonic Verge escape, it looks like they're on. Not maybe the same signal here. It looks like Sing Sing, he will get called though. Might be able to bring him down. Only play there it is finally they turn it around one for one trade that's most definitely worth it for the cinder and kill however they did lose the tower on top of all of that which was destroyed by the shadow team and so it is going to be the full gold going for kaipi we talk about bambo plays now yes so keep in mind what he did there he could have left he came back to kill the two large creeps with his burrow strike and then he didn't have enough mana for sandstorm uh, Yapsor very, very closely didn't kill him. It was really close. And then Bambo denied himself the neutral. So he got like 150 gold killing those two neutrals, then denied himself and lost 200 gold because he died to neutrals. <laughs> That's literally what happened there. It wasn't even worth it. It wasted Yapsor's time. That was the best thing he did, which I find super funny because him and Yapsor are actually friends. So I almost wonder if he went in and did that shit all because he knew it was Yapsor. Like, I feel like that's a Bambo thing, even if it's a pro game and there's money at stake. I get it. Purge, like Purge, is, Purge is the Bambo whisperer. He knows better than anybody what Bambo is like, I feel like, in these games. Huge Purge... tonight from Morana just now, by the way. <laughs> I want you to, like, ask Bambo about, like, all of this stuff after the games are over, and I just want to, like, I want to get the inside scoop. Yeah, I, but... I, I, what, is that okay? Like, I, I, I sent him a message after a game when I was like, maybe I just shouldn't message him. It's like a best of five, you know? This is, like, a big deal. So, like, wait, like, maybe he's got shit to do. Maybe he's talking to his team, you know? Like, I should... I'm gonna wait until after the series, maybe. Yeah. Okay. That's polite of you. I wouldn't do that, though. I would message him immediately. Hey, man. What's what that, was up uh... with that uh, huge mistake, Abe? Tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, let me know. And so we can talk about it further before your next game starts. I mean, he's <laughs> almost got Blink, regardless. Like, this is literally the essence of Bambo. That was crazy shit, and it completely works because... He keeps denying neutrals. He's actually he's actually so good at denying the neutrals. It was one of the one of his biggest accomplishments. Uh, oh, he's gonna die here. He's so close to blink though. Oh. Yep, fiend's grip arrow can come at oh, any time. Rough. There it is. Starstorm dead. Bambo and he's he doesn't lose that much gold. All all things considered. Oh come on, dude. He was a hundred away from blink there. Like yeah, you're right. He didn't lose that much, but. That was still, that's still rough. He could have had yeah. like a 12 minute blink dagger. He just had to kill one more neutral. 12 game. minute and maybe 13 minute blink dagger. So one minute delayed, I'd say. And, well, and not even that. He's dead for 20 seconds and he was already on the map. So he not only does he have to respawn, but he also has to go somewhere to set up a gank. He could have finished that neutral, flown out like a smoke, a uh, blink dagger, and a clarity, and then go immediately go mid. He could have a gank mid in like 20 seconds or something. Curry wasn't in use, but now it's much delayed. All right, here we go. Bone Seven starting to invade the enemy jungle with three nearby on the Tide Hunter. Okay, for Limp, the Lucian Beam will go. Mana for Leap, but the Burrow Strike comes in. Do they have any follow up? The Leap's up and away up to the 
They have the wraparound though. Here comes Sig Sig. The Omni Slash. The Blade Grid. He wants Flim. Flim's pretty speedy. But he will go down. It's going to be Pylai Dai and Jug getting the last hit. The Absor is going to be next. They'll find two. And Kai P looking very solid in the second game, Purge. Yeah, and now we're really seeing the weaknesses of Troll as well. Really good initiation. I didn't think that they were going to be able to kill Murano there because she had the regen, but Sing Sing was able to wrap around from the backside in the meantime. And just a little bit of spin damage, a great positioning. They get a kill and a tier 1 tower. Completely uncontested with two kills. Really nicely done by Kai P. So for now, Dyer's top one is under attack. situating towards mid. 7 with the Ogre Club. And, well, the side hunts are now building up towards the mech, so they're getting closer and closer yeah. to these big items. This looks really bad for escape. I'm just looking at Troll right now. He just finishes his helmet, the Dominator. But this game is already too early game. Like, Troll takes too long to get online to be effective is the issue here. And Helm of the Dominator just makes it worse. In some ways, it's better just to go um, Mask of Death to have that lifesteal ready. In some ways, um, a, an item build that might be better on him is something like a Vanguard. Um, that's that's what I advocate for on PA, at least. Oh, he gets a kill on Pilot Eye. Nice kill by Limp. That's really needed. Any solo kills they can get are huge. But he basically needs an item that gives him sustain in the jungle and something that gives him HP, which is kind of more Vanguardy. But the problem with Troll versus PA is you can't upgrade to Abyssal, so Vanguard's kind of bad as well. It's just the, the Troll item problems are not quite solved yet. I think that's why the hero is weak right now. Other than the fact that early game is so important. Which goes back to the point of why they picked it in the first place. You know, there are theoretically good um, matchups for Troll potentially in this game, but there's other safe lane carries that you can go for, or whatever carries, yeah. positions, whatever you want to call them. I mean, it gets them a lot of physical damage. It, that's cool and all, but it's not like they have the most physical right-click carries ever, either. Morana and Axe? Eh. I guess right, I was going to make that point cool. during the draft. I was like, all right, well, you have Battle Trance, but the only person that's going to be really gaining any damage from that is going to be Era. By the way, while this is all happening top lane, you can see Roshan is being taken by Dire Team KP. IP, they have the Dragon Lance on Bone 7. Sing Sing is up to phase drum at 1700 gold, so he's clearly dedicated to early fighting. And with the mech as well, and a Blink Dagger on Sand King. Now with an Aegis, they can take a fight and without any issue whatsoever, and you can see it. Limp's already going to back away with a leap, but the rest of the squad is immediately hightailing it out That of was there. interesting. Um, they got really scared about Bone 7 showing up there. Um... Us looking at this, it looked really clear, but I, I Escape was genuinely concerned that the team was already set up there. In reality, that was just a huge bluff with a gamble on the Aegis there. Kind of cool that that worked out. I guess either way, Clips eventually killed somebody. But um, yeah, Escape got real scared, and uh, KP, KP is going to lose almost nothing from that aggressive maneuver. Where are we going to go here for Escape? That's the question. Where are they going to make their move? They have to wait for the Aghanim Scepter for Limp. That might be that big turnaround item that we've talked about time and time again. Well, they wanted to kill somebody here. If they can find somebody farming, it'd be perfect, but... Bone 7 doing the safe thing, just sitting in his ages too, so as soon as they go on him, TPs will come en masse, and they'll have yeah. 5 on 5 at that point. And it's nighttime. It's daytime now. Now Escape can actually go in, they can actually see things, but at nighttime... He easily has an, the vision advantage. But they're now that they see... They're on the edge. Oh, they see Bone 7 now. now. They're going to go for him. Blink call, they'll find it. Here comes the TPs. Remember, he's got Aegis. Can they bring him down once? Let alone twice. It looks like the answer to that question is no. Of course, TP's coming in. Ravage is still available. But there's the Blink. There's going to be the... At least the Burrow Strike. And now Kezu's going to look for a call. Can he get a counter helix proc? No. Great disruption coming out from Pylai Dai. Making sure no counter helix procs are had. That'll be that. That was nicely done. Um, I, I thought that Hypey was making a huge mistake there, but with the support TPs, yeah, easily covered. And didn't even lose Aegis there. Dyer's middle tower oh, Bambo. Give me that bounty rune. Very interesting that he hasn't gotten any Caustic, by the way, because most Sand Kings, especially support Sand Kings, have always been prioritizing Caustic Finale, but Bambo's still on the Sandstorm train. It's worked out, I guess. I mean, he doesn't have the best, I, I would say one big thing is that there aren't a lot of heroes that he can just easily right click chase, like Bane for example, if he's trying to kill Bane, Bane will just sleep him, there's no point to get Caustic to chase him that way. I mean, I'd maybe Parch has one skill point in it, just because it can apply a slow, which is useful, but, but it's just kind of cool to see. Um, I, I don't blame him for not getting one skill point, though. just really difficult heroes to chase. Same goes for Troll, Axe, Kunkka even. Just safer to get Sandstorm. All right, what do we got here? 2,000 net worth advantage for Kai P. Not that much. 2,000 experience advantage. But again, 
The problem is, is that you're fighting into a Luna and a... Well, hold that thought. Ghost ship's gonna come through, and looks like they're gonna... I'll find anybody. Cinderin has to use a Nightmare to try to get away, but here, Bambo, he's got Burrow Strike in one. And, uh, well, they'll walk right through. Cinderin about to get Burrowed, it looks like. Although, Cinder is very speedy. Blink forward, block through, Burrow Strike, Blade Fury getting the kill, and an Ancient Stack to contest. Although, no Butterfly for the Juggernaut. They can still do it with the Tidehunter if they need to. Yeah, Cinderin getting a little way too overeager there. Trying to fight and kill um, on, a, on a Bambo doing crazy thing. But, you know, that's what he does. He gets in your head. He does things that seem so stupid sometimes, but they're actually very smart. So the times like these where he's actually backed up by his team, you don't always know if they're there or not just because he's so unpredictable. That kind of playstyle actually adds a massive amount. It's like the, uh, the drunken fighting style thing or whatever. Yeah. I know nothing about it, but my theory craft about it is that you look drunk, so you, you fight him less seriously, and then he might just own you. Uh, I don't know that's if that's how Bamble plays Dota. Of, but that's of... how Bamble plays Dota. The Drunken Fighter. Uh, I can't kind remember of. the exact name of the style that it is, but it yeah, is a real it's thing, in by like the way. every video game, you know what I mean? It is also a real thing, by the way. Um, yeah. If you're interested in the Drunken Fighting style, guys, check it out on YouTube. Bambo. Or Bambo. Watch Bambo's Dota game. Or watch Bambo's Dota game. Helm, Helm of the Dominator for Luna picked a very interesting build here. That, yeah, does that signify more late game type of oriented draft or? Um, I mean, slightly. I, I'm mostly just curious what I or curious what item build he goes, but it's actually a pretty good satanic game if you look at the lineup for escape. Once he gets through the whole like chain stunning phase, he should be able to just late game buy a satanic and just easily, easily match the axe. Axe would become no issue, and um, even troll warlord might be less of a problem. Kind of interesting. It's very farm heavy, basically. You're right. It is kind of late game in that sense. Oh, Manta next, just to be able to deep the troll blind, and then he's more or less set. As long as he doesn't get too much solo, his team should back him up, though. I mean, I feel like he could have gone Manta first. I mean, I guess the Helm of the Dominator does provide some nice stats to a certain extent. Not, you know. It allows him to farm Ancients, is the big thing, really. Um, without lifesteal, it's cool. All right, here's the Aghanim Scepter for Limp, and this is where it gets uh, a bit tricky for Kai P. If they can survive in the next couple of minutes without giving too many, uh, too much uh, in terms of kills away, the thing is, I don't think that's going to happen. Kai P has such a good team fight lineup, like Burrow Strike, Ravage to reset the fight. They have Mech. They have they have the um, disruption. I mean, it's so hard for Escape to find any real target if Kai P are grouped up. And now there's a Blink Taker yeah. on the side hunter as well. Yeah, he's actually insanely farm this game. He's having a great game. 2 0 and 3. Here, Mech Arcane at 20 minutes. That's great. Sing Sing's farming pretty well, also. Um, he's going for Manta style, very similar to what um, Luna's prioritizing now. Um, the difference is he didn't go Battle Fury this game, but I don't think that's weird at all. In early game lineups, Battle Fury really delays your effectiveness. Sing Sing trying to deny there, but Limp's damage is just a little too much. He might get caught here, actually. This is really dangerous. Didn't have vision. If that was daytime, he would have died there, almost for sure. What do you think about the Kezu choice for the Axe PKB? Kill top. Bamboo. Bambo finally giving the kill on the Axe Um, I think it's pretty needed, because if he initiates on people, there will be a Ravage. There's going to be an Epicenter too. Oh, Bambo. Oh. They have the Ravage ready to go. Is 3-3 three, three going to pop it? No, it's on cooldown. He used it already up at the top lane. 3-3 three, is in trouble. I have gone too deep bad. already. They've already lost Bambo. He's going to try to deny himself. He uses the next, but now here comes the reinforcement. Sing Sing, the blank out. They'll make it away in time. Do they want to turn this? Blank call is ready in six. It's a little too far. They have to keep they running. Maybe Sing Sing. Fight. Shadow Poison continuing to put it on cooldown. Too bad he doesn't have his Yasha, actually. If he had his Yasha, he could definitely chase. He would Moonlight have a lot Shadow, more they're going to try to turn this. Did they see the Moonlight Shadows? The question. Sentry's there. They know they're coming. There's the Eclipse. Air is caught. He's going to try to go to work, but it's not going to be enough. Good disruption as well. Omni Slash clears out a Creep Wave and the Axe. And that's going to be the end of the engagement. And it's just so sad. They had a two for nothing. They could have backed. They could have gotten away. They tried to turn. A great Sentry Ward placed down means they can't yeah. follow up. You know what, I had a really tough time playing against Invis Heroes yesterday when I streamed, and, and that, I really enjoyed that Sentry Word from Pilot Eye, but also made me very sad, remembering what happened yesterday. Like, every single game, Ricky would smoke Cloud, and he would just walk away, and I'm like, okay, somebody could have a Sentry. I'm just salty. What so, were you flying? It didn't matter. Every game there was an Invis Hero, and we didn't have Sentries. 
fault. That was just that's how beautiful it was what Pilot died did there. They completely anticipated that. And they felt very comfortable going for that 3v4 sort of engagement, even though they didn't have Ravage, just because Eclipse and uh, Omni Slash and Shadow Demon comboed with that is so strong. It was, it was really well done. They were able to turn that so well. That was an impressive turnaround. It just all comes down to that vision, having the abilities up, and knowing what's coming from Escape. Yep, and they know that Escape doesn't have a lot of summons, so Escape, uh, Eclipse is always going to be strong, at least pre-BKB. And that's another cool thing about what they're doing. They're actually utilizing their spells when they're useful. They, If they just sat back and farmed for a super long time, then eventually Escape gets BKBs, and they start taking fights, and then it becomes really difficult for Kaipi to win fights. But they started doing fights, and they're they're putting themselves in these kind of engagements and making stuff happen before Escape is able to finish those BKBs and get that. Axe just died, and he was like less than 500 gold probably away from his BKB being finished. And then that timing doesn't get exploited as well as it could have been. All right, bro, Strike, they're gonna find error yet again, and he can't afford to die really, and he is going to go down. Blade Fury, fast. she is very fast, but they should still find a battle trance will go right before he dies as they're chasing elsewhere. Go ship, they're gonna find Bone Seven. He's gonna pop the Manta. He should still be able to survive. They've got the Fiend's Grip. They want to get a call. They want to get a dunk, but they just can't. As at this point, they're being bodyguarded too well. Nightmare and Cinderin trying to stay alive. Unfortunately, not able to do so. Sinksy finds the double kill, and they are just running over Escape at every opportunity. I can't... Well, last time, they've got a couple of kills. The Axe did get the Tidehunter, and as well as, of course, the, the uh, Sand King going down to limp on the Marana. But they're pushing high ground at 24 minutes in, and Kai P want to assert their dominance. This advantage of almost 7,500 great stars from doing a lot of work there. Still, yeah. though... They got a force mech. That's a decent, a decent opening here that they landed that arrow. Sing Sing does get the spin off. He will siege high ground. They might have to back now. Everybody's alive. Oh, oh Bambo's gonna get Bambo walked into that arrow. Here comes the ghost ship. Both of them might be in trouble. He gets blown up the Ravage, though. Starting things off. Burrow strike, but where's the follow up damage? They no longer have the Luna. It's time to retreat. Bambo will go down. Starstorm, that's more than enough damage. They have the X Mark. They'll bring back 3 3. Is this the turnaround? It looks like it is. Three dead on the side of Kai P. And Arrow will walk straight down mid, trying to find whatever he can here in terms of CS, maybe in terms of objectives. But that's all it takes. Yeah. One positioning air from a Luna. And it wasn't just it wasn't just Luna, it was a positioning error kind of forced by Shadow Demon there. That was really on pile I die. Like it felt like Hype P wanted to back off. He disrupted one more time for the Luna and they were able to follow up and initiate. And when you when you start trying to do illusion spamming, you lose your important ability. It's the disruption. If they had disruption for that boat combo, Luna wouldn't have died in the first place. So you if you do disruptions to push, you can't cast it when they're that close to the front, especially not against a punishing lineup like Escape. Those three deaths are really gonna cost Kaipi. They could have gone map control and then easily taken Roshan immediately after that, and instead the game has been evened up entirely. Map control is even right now due to those three heroes dying. Yeah, they're gonna at the very least, I think, uh Escape will be able to drag this game out a little bit longer, if not be able to take the game altogether. It's, uh, it's saying a little, that's a little early to say that I, I know, but, you know, fights like that, they can turn things on a dime here and anything can happen in the next couple of moments. But looking at the graph, it's a 5,000 net worth lead going down to about 4,000 to 3,000. It hits the torrent onto Sing Sing Mid, he'll back away. Itemize -wi itemization wise, you have a couple of big items coming out. Yaps Royce picked up a headdress alongside almost a Vlad's recipe. The armlet is done for him. Air has BKB Yasha, still lacking on some damage. Kezu has BKB No Ravage, Blank. by the way. If the fight happens right now, they won't have Ravage. How long is it on cooldown for? 41 seconds, plenty of time. Pretty pretty long. They're gonna walk up, here we go. Do they see them? Oh, Blink call. call, it's on to two. No Sing Sing, the torrent's gonna come up though. The ghost ship should fall. Great defensive disruption, but Sing Sing in trouble. The Omni Slash will go through and Bone 7 and Sing Sing, it's their job. They've got the call in play, but the Axe doesn't chase Sing Sing down now. Damn they turn their Bambo. attention to Bambo. Fiend's Grip is up. He will get brought back, and he's in trouble for the loose beams. They get the Eclipse off. It's a two for two, and they lose Era. Highlight I going to work the disruption on Lip now. He's caught. He's got Star Storm, but the loose beam will clean him up. And finally, Kai P turn it right around and heads directly into Roshan. Absolutely. Perfect clutch team prep from Hype Peak, considering they didn't have Ravage there and Tide died right at the start. It all came down to the disruption on Luna that bought him time to get out using Manta style. Eventually, the BKBs were wearing down, and that was when Bambo came in from the back lane, landed his full epicenter on four heroes with Burrow Strike. He died for this, but the important thing is it got everybody low enough that Bone 7 could reinitiate using Eclipse and just cleaning up the fight. So, amazingly played fight from Kaipi there.
Nice to play from Escape as well, but Kaipi really did everything they needed to perfectly to win a fight, despite those dire circumstances. Now it's, uh, for that Aegis, where do you go from here, Purge? Do you want to continue to farm a little bit further? I feel like they have everything they need. They just have to wait for an, a couple more abilities to come off cooldown. Then and they're then... good. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, they can just grab Tide and take two, they can kill two heroes. They don't have to take a full team fight, you know? There's always that possibility, especially with Roche being down. If they don't have their team fight ultimate, it's actually not that big of a deal. Oh, Pai is going to get himself killed here. Big mistake. He got X'd. He will disrupt himself. All right, he's fine. He just has to anticipate when the X will come through. As long as he disrupts after one and a half seconds, he won't get thrown back. So he's just trying to create space here and make them feel uneasy and think that everybody on Kaipi is in that area. In the meantime, everyone's farming. But you know, it's actually, it's crazy to look at this game and be and think about how, like, how fearsome Kaipi actually is as a team. If, I don't know, I don't remember who their other support is normally, but Pilei Dai is literally doing major work on this team. As is Bambo as well. I feel like those two supports together, the amount of space that they create is, is actually insane. Uh, now you're gonna make me look this up at some point. No, but but like look at just look at the game though. Like Kaipi is um, honestly this this roster right here that's playing right now is playing extremely well. Like there's some small mistakes here and there, and there are some maybe some failings in a couple of small places. But like even game one, they played it really really well. Like these guys know Dota. It's very clear. Uh, they've been playing for a while. A lot of these people have been playing together for ages. Sing Sing, Bambo, Bone Seven. Like these are some, uh, well, at least Sing Sing and Bone 7. Uh, Pile I die on top of that as well, you know. Bambo has been with him off and on over the course of the past couple of years, so. Now they get to do some abusive illusion pushing. I'm glad they split these. I feel like not enough teams do this. If you spread the illusions out, they don't die as rapidly. You get a bit more damage. I mean, that and tower they're gonna keep from, abusing this. from, like, full health to half health within yep, that, that illusion. That's Shadow down. Demon plus Luna, man. It's, it's really good. All the creeps are dying, the heroes are dying, they can't really react to this because they're just illusions. Even Manta from Jug, look how abusive this is. They've got the AoE, but it's costing them so much more than it's yeah. costing Cape. Escape, escape are, are forced into essentially going from a wraparound gank and trying to they find something. They are splitting though. Aerith's getting some good damage on the tower. This is good for them. They have to force something soon here for Bone 7 to walk up. Arrow will hit onto Pile I Die. He's now going to get jumped on by Lent, but the mech saves his life for now. Kanju gets a great oh, call. call. They're going to lose two. They're going to lose three. Beautifully done. Bill. Is it going to be enough? Five that comes down from the Shadow Demon Cinder and now looking to try to get Bone 7. He has Aegis and he's got Satanic. Meanwhile, he did get the kill on Cinder, so no more Fiend's Grip, but he will lose his first life. And meanwhile, Era gets the tier 3 tower, the buyback stopping any further aggression. Meanwhile, Bone 7 as well as 3-3 three, three are still there. The call, Kezu is going to give up his life, but maybe Torrent. 3-3 three, three is low and he will fall. The Tidebringer, the damage, limp has to leap away. And Bone oh, 7 doing close. some right click. They need to get this kill. The X marks is there. They've got the Torrent. There's the arrow. It won't be in time. That would have been a great combination. A beautiful combination, but it wasn't there. But they do get the range racks top. Somehow escape are holding on to this game purge. I don't know how, yeah. but it's happening. It all came down to that one arrow on the, the Shadow Demon. If that was on anybody else, he could disrupt that person or keep him alive in some way. But the fact that it was SD and then they grouped around it, they said, I want to help defend against this follow-up, but they all got too close and it led to Luna getting called in there and Tide getting called. And then all of a sudden, Axe is just doing insane damage output, followed up with a boat combo. And that is exactly what opened things up for escape. It was great arrow with... <laughs> Bad position from Kai P. Once Axe blinks in with BKB, they can't stop it. There's nothing they can do. Except for maybe Anchor Smash on Axe, but that's about it. It's not enough. Can't get caught. Pilot I cannot get caught. Like, it just changes too much. What a back and forth game this is, honestly. A lot like the first game, too. Well, the middle stages of the first game. Yeah, really great series so far. I think you really probably is. agree with me. It's been, a, it's been an amazing, amazing game so far, I really. Um, Lincoln's on Marana is the big thing. Um, he can stop a couple. He can stop Burrow Strike with that. That's pretty huge. Um, I think what else is big? Troll Warlord has BKB SNY. Mm -hmm. He's still very behind in terms of items, though. It's 31 minutes. Usually you'd be aiming towards a Scotty about here, but that's likely, it's really a big problem with Troll. You have a lot of trouble getting kills, staying ahead, um, continuing to scale, unless your team has good team fights. And they haven't really completely. There's one four nine at the moment. More items, I'm sure. And he gets there by 
team fighting, farming. How good is Trill at farming? It's, it's I mean, okay. in comparison to Luna, so... Well, I mean, considering the fact that he's actually ahead of Sing Sing in farm is really good. Yes. Um, Sting is sitting at 6, 2, and 7. Much better team fight performance, but he's been pushing with his team a lot more. Whereas Era's pretty much just been AFK farming jungle camps and all of these these slow push downtimes. Put that on top of the fact that he didn't go battle for you first, and that's naturally why Sing is behind. But it's not necessarily a bad thing that he is behind, nor that he went Manta. There were some really good things that he did with Manta in the early game. I think they were expecting to be able to grab a Rax, though. Um, or at least the tower. Once the tower is dead, it becomes much, much easier for you to, to actually finish off the racks. Because as soon as the tower dies, the glaives bounce all over the place. They just didn't quite get to that in time. And the arrow kind of changed everything. Not to mention arrows split pushing. So, Kaipi not really expecting to be in this position. But either way, Bone Seven still doing very well. By far the highest net worth. And his next item will be a damage item. Quite possibly something like Butterfly. Yeah, Butterfly. Like, Butterfly Satanic, along with all your other items, is when you start getting dangerous as a Luna. Um, and you start dishing out that insane damage, so... And Troll is and no... Well, he could maybe buy MKB next, but it's a little dangerous for him. Especially dealing with somebody like Bone7 that has Satanic. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Kinda iffy. <sighs> well, we'll see where it goes. We'll grab Arrow if Arrow comes to BKB. Uh, he doesn't. He does not. He gets disrupted. That will give him time to BKB coming out of it. He's not going to BKB yet. The Omni Slash coming through, and it's actually just going to be interrupted by the Moonlight Shadow. But they did they pick up the Absor? Or did he TP home? No, he just TP'd right away, and they didn't get him. They didn't have Burrow Strike up. A little surprising. They could have Ravaged for it, but for support, it's not worth it, especially when you're doing the CG install. And Kaipi instead is going to go for top lane. Um, this is going to force. Um, escape to split push bottom, which is obviously going to take a lot longer than it would have if they just went top lane to get a melee rex. Oh, nice uh, Helm of the Dominator for Lucas. He's pulling the creep wave back up. He's not even killing it, he's just pulling it around in circles. It's just a delay. Now he'll Super go to sick work. play from Era. Yeah, that was nice. They just don't want to give Kaipi the opportunity to start this slow siege bullshit that you can do with Sanko. Ooh, can he get... Oh, I was going to say if he could get another, um, what you call it off, Thundershock off, that'd be huge, Thunderclap. And they Escape do get the kill bottom. Amazing. They get the kill on the Sand King on Sexy Bambo at the bottom lane, so... Yeah. Uh, but on the other side... So well. Ooh, Diffuse Blade on Era. He has to pop his BKB here, it looks like. Although he's doing a lot of damage to Sing Sing, he's just manning up on him. But there's Roar Heroes coming in. BKB will go. They have no Basher. That BKB is the 8 second charge. It's getting lower and lower. Yeah, but now bad. Limp gets the kill on the tower down bottom. The Marana finish off the tier 2 tower in that bottom lane. They're just playing it very well, constantly split pushing top as soon as Kaipi gets prepped for bottom. They they won a very good team fight, which kind of saved their game in a lot of ways, and then they're constantly pushing other lanes, which forces Bur or Sen King to go back. He ends up getting caught because Escape rotated the axe over in anticipation of that. Then, you know, Era does lose his BKB charge, but as a whole, they're doing a great job pressuring. They just need to make sure that Kaipi doesn't have the opportunities to get close to the racks and to slowly siege it with illusions. If that's what happens, they will win this game. But Escape is doing the things they need to do to prevent them from even getting into that situation. Limp has picked up a level 2 Dagon flying out now as we speak. So they have more burst damage okay. to work with to take down somebody that's a bit tankier without BKB. Interesting, he didn't go E-Blade, but... Considering the BKB potential for his opponents, I don't think it's terrible. E-Blade's also not the best against somebody like Tidehunter. He will just crack and shell off the E-Blade and then you'd be better off having a Dagon usually. Although, having a um, a Ghost Scepter built into the E-Blade might be nice in case he gets Omni Slash, but we'll see. Ghost ship just for farming for Mr. Kunko. Pushing, of course. Is that an Orchid? Cool. Orchid yeah, coming up like from the Absolute. Yeah, Orchid, yeah. Against the SD or pretty much everybody, I mean, Junkie mans it off. Luna although... chose not to buy a BKB, is the important thing. So Tide Hunter can crack and shell it, I believe, and then you have the yeah. Sand King who can use it. Yeah, I guess it has to be against the SD and the Luna, except he has Mans mean... style as well. Yeah, yeah, I guess I kind of agree. There's a lot of solutions on every team. Um, Jug as well, he's got Diffusal. He could Diffusal the Silence off somebody else, yep. for example. Yep. There are a lot of solutions, but who knows? Maybe it'll be useful. And some of those long drawn out team fights, for example, if Manta's already been, already been used, if you can Orchid Luna afterwards, make a difference, especially if he doesn't get off. I mean, if they decide to use their Mantis to push the high ground, he can go in and you can just uh, try to go for the, the Orchid earlier on. 
Yeah, I, I think the idea is initiate fights. Somebody gets disrupted, you orchid them as soon as they come out. If they don't have BKB or if they haven't used, if they already use Manta, and then you don't get an Eclipse, that could win them a team fight easily. Eclipse has really been the game changer consistently throughout this game. It always looks like Hype is losing. Eclipse comes out, does a huge amount of damage. It's just based on the heroes. If Escape had a Beastmaster or something, it'd be completely different. You'd be eating that up with Necros and and Hawks and Boars and things, and it wouldn't be a big deal. But quite good this game. No summons coming out for escape gaming in this game, so that's something that they have to deal with. Um, there's a crash. The Apsor will be back into the game momentarily, we hope. And it looks like he is, so ready to go in just a moment. This is shaping up to be a long series, I think, uh, Purge, unless somehow I'm, I'm totally escape down. the series. Like, game has been really interesting. Maybe some oh. of that time period in, in game one seemed boring, but there's so many smart things that both teams were doing. That made it actually interesting. Don't get me wrong. I'm I'm excited for this for this for this five game series. I'm just hoping that it gets to that five game series to begin with. A three game series. Uh, no, I'm sure that's what they, that's what the teams want, but that's not what we want. I don't no, dude. If, no, come on, dude. If the if the game's ended right now, oh, ST. Okay, he's out. And... Oh, great call, follow. And good neck. Ravage, but he's still dead anyways. But here comes the Omni Slash. Kenzu will at least lose his life for this. So it's a support for Core at this point. Sig Sing will just go ahead and Blade Fury as the X is gone. That's the counter, really. Now yeah, top lane arrow. So nice. Is he going to go on Bone 7? He has Satanic. I don't think this is the best fight. And Bone 7 just backs away, however, interestingly. Eric can beat him 1v1 until um, there's a butterfly on, uh, on the Luna. So it's pretty safe for him to do this. Flies now up, so he wouldn't have enough uh, hit accuracy to probably beat him in one v one. Got Manta in case he gets the blind. It gets blinded, so he should be able to be more survivable now. But I like the blink dagger pickup on troll. It kind of solves a lot of the problems. The hero really does need massive amounts of mobility. He's got a gap to close instantly. The stacks up. Um, more chances of bashing, things like that. I'll take down. This group wave down bottom is getting pushed in. How do you feel about team being aggressive, smoking, trying to find something? I mean, Roche is, I can't believe it's not up yet. It's almost max duration at this point, but who's going to make the most, uh, who's going to make the aggressive play here next? Is it going to be Kai most, P or Escape? Most likely Escape. I feel like Kai P feels like they can control the map enough to, to just take Roche without a fight. Um, escape is going to have to fight into Roche, most likely. That's why picks are so big right now. And that's why Cinderin's moved to the top lane. If Luna shows up again, they just grip him and he dies. That is very so, true. No wards there either. They, they've got some good wards. This this ward placement is good because it's in a spot. Escape moving to that offlane position in the first place. And that may be why Kaipi is not here right now. Maybe they saw Cinderin walk through that ward. Is there any gems? No gems this game at all. Whatsoever. I guess uh, Vegas should have not been a big enough factor for either teams to warrant a gem this, this game. And here we go. It's Roche time. The dire team will grab Roche on and try to get this into a, a, a third game tied 1-1. One, one. Like, yeah, is... uh, gonna grab the Aegis. Probably Luna. She's so tanky, though. Sing Sing's also very difficult to kill, so maybe it's it's worth it. Probably is, because if they if she gets, gets just gets bursted at the start of the fight before using Aegis, it's game losing. And they did have a cheese that was third Roche, so this is pretty safe to do. She's there for Sing. He's difficult to kill. I'd like to see him grab another survivability item or go MKB. He's going to maybe need MKB because of the troll. She troll build something like Butterfly. But he could also go Scotty, put his HP up towards 2500. He's, he's playing really well this game. Well, they find troll error, actually. has been found by Bone7. So he's got faster. Butterfly Flutter if he wants to chase him down. But the arrow will come through and, well, there is that Blink Taker for the troll, so... Yeah, there's, like, no way he'd get that kill. Keep that he should be creep. So how come the creeps get more HP when you use Helm of the Dominator? Does it like make them magical or something? I I think so. Maybe well Another time maybe. Slack should be here instead of you mod. Uh, one I time I know. feel like talking about lore. I almost listen, I'm willing to put up a bet that Slack doesn't know anything about Helm of the Dominator. Like he doesn't know the lore behind it. it says it's a powerful headpiece of a dead necromancer. It sounds like magic to me. All right, I guess it's magic. So I guess magic. you found it out. I guess I could do the research. Well, but there's like no specifics to that. Like, what kind of magic is it? How does it give it extra like HP? That's a good point, dude. I need to know the words that he has to chant to make it work. Oh, they smoked right under ward here. <laughs> it's a little too in depth. 
I'm not gonna go that far. A little bit of harass here from the illusions. They're doing a nice job split pushing. It's a lot safer if they use a manto illusion, and then pilot eye disrupts that illusion to spawn more illusions. Solution after illusion. Here's the smoke though from Tide from Pilot Eye Die. We're kind of waiting. Yeah. An error continuing to split push, same principles as before. Another thing that helps with the blink dagger so much. It's so much easier to blink into trees and hide. Ooh, but Sanky gotta get out. Limp is looking for something. Arrow. That would have been dirty, but it looks like Pilot I knew as there was a ward over there. Meanwhile, Sexy Bambo and Kezu playing footsies. They're not gonna find each other and Sing Sing. No blink for him, but they, they everyone's kind of in the same area if they want to look to fight. And in fact, it's looking for Era. So I'll catch us up on him. I know, there's no ward up here, they don't know. Find something. Yeah, there's gonna be, um. I think. I think he's. Maybe. Anyways. Find, uh, Scotty. Makes complete sense. Not a weird build in any way. This game's a little. Does this look like a 6.86 6 or whatever the heck? 6.83. Is this, this yeah. is 6.83, dude? Yep. Jug versus Troll Warlord? We're back in time. Here. <sighs> You know, curiously, I actually really like picking Shadow Demon and solo queue during those eras because uh, SD is actually very good against the two heroes. He can make, uh, he can solo kill him and stuff with eggs, or even just disruption, soul catcher, monarch purge. He's very good at killing him. Spin. Okay, Something he, he goes Yules. Interesting. I, I wasn't sure what item he would pick up. Yules is a good idea though. That way, if he uses disruption, he can like Yules an axe that's calling somebody with blade mail, or he can Yules himself if he gets axed. Is this gonna be the racks though? This is. This looks like a push. If it, really escape doesn't. can hold here, it's gonna be pretty miraculous. You can maybe turn it around, damage. but they've got Glyph, they're gonna have to use it soon here. Limp is gonna get destroyed! Oh, he's dead. He just gets destroyed by the Glaives! And that bro is straight ghost ship will hit onto Bone 7, but remember, he's Aegis and Satanic. The Astro might be next. Good call on the two. He pops up the BKB as well as the Blade Bail. They've got Ravage ready to go as you getting chopped down. Ravage will find oh, Lift. Lift gets owned again. The dieback coming out and Kai P looking to end this game and tie it up at one apiece. Look at the it looks more than likely. Look at this damage. They've killed everyone over and over. And Yapsor will be maybe the final to fall. Sends in the, the well, but I don't think you're going to dive it. Epicenter for. I guess just a celebration at the end of the game coming out from Bambo and what a game from Kai P. Solid stuff, really well played, all things considered, Purge. Yeah, the, the only thing I can think of that.